Common Room Radio. I'm Sarah Cade. And I'm Liz Stevens. And welcome to Disney Princess Deathmatch, where we take all 14, well, okay, all 12 official Disney princesses and Anna and Elsa from Frozen because I want to. Why aren't they on the list? It's so okay, weird. Okay, here's the thing. The only reason Anna and Elsa are not on the official list is that their movie did so well financially that they have like their own merchandising line. Oh, so yeah. there's the Frozen line and the and Disney then Princess line. the Disney line. Princess lines, yes. Weird. Isn't that strange? Which is why we were, which is why you and I felt comfortable fudging that and going yeah. ahead and including them because it's not like they were too young or their lions. Right. Or their movie flopped. I mean, clearly yeah. it did not. Interesting. Yeah. So huh. that's, yeah, that was, we felt uh, comfortable enough going ahead and including them. Although after today, I don't see the point in continuing this series anymore. And so. This may be the definitive episode yes. right here of Disney Princess Deathmatch. Because we, we watched just watched Tangled. Tangled. And it's really good. Rapunzel, and Rapunzel is the best. amazing. She's really She's great. She's the best. Yeah. Yeah, so next week we will be doing more of Why Rapunzel is Amazing. And then after that, it'll be the final in our three-part series of Why Rapunzel is the Best Disney Princess and Stop Loving Any Other Princess Because You Are Wrong. I'm sorry, but I'm not really. You can't say stop loving the other princesses. No, I feel Just like I can. She might she's she might be the winner. But you know what? We've been surprised before when That's we got true. to the, when we got That's to the true. actual grade. I don't think so. we'll be surprised today. No. We've been talking about this since day one. We it's were like, true. well, who's we the winner gonna be? That she's it's Rapunzel. Probably right? gonna be the one to win. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about our movie. Let's go ahead. My son calls this movie The Princess and the Horse. <laughs> He's three. <laughs> And that's what stands out to him in this film. (laughs) That's perfect. I love it. It's pretty great. So Tangled came out in 2010. Uh, Rapunzel is canonically 18 years old. The music is done by Alan Menken, who we've seen previously in Beauty and the Beast and Little Mermaid. Alan Menken can do no wrong. He can do no wrong. It was Disney's 50th animated feature film. Wow. Yeah. 50th. Now, I remember this one pretty well because uh, it was one that Lily and I saw in theaters, mm-hmm. which we didn't see very many movies in theaters anyway. That right. just wasn't part of the things that we did mm-hmm. because she saw movies with her dad all the time. Right. So that was their thing they did together yeah. on weekends. So we just didn't go That's and see That's what I do with my movies. dad on the weekends. Exactly. So... When this movie came out, he actually was given advanced screening tickets to it. Like two weeks before it came out and you had to have your special passes and the Mm -hmm. thing around your neck and everything. But he couldn't go because he had a show. He does theater and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went with Lily. I got that opportunity to go instead. Mm -hmm. And it was really something that will always stick out in my mind seeing this very special movie with my daughter who was the perfect age. She was five years old. She was five years old. Mm -hmm. So it was like the age to take a little girl to go see a princess movie. And I remember after the fact... There, there was somebody like taking notes at the end, asking questions, like asking mm-hmm. those audience note taking questions, you know, and they asked Lily, what was your favorite part? And she was like, uh, my favorite part was when she hit him with the frying pan. <laughs> so it was tons of fun. Yeah, dad and I went to go see this movie. I think it was like a Sunday afternoon. Um, I think it maybe had been out for a little bit uh, because initially I wasn't sure if I wanted to go see it. Like I was 22 when this movie came out and I was like, ah, I mean, because I didn't, the trailers for me weren't necessarily compelling. It had like that pink song that pink cover of the I'm coming out better get this party started oh my gosh I forgot yeah about no no that. no it wasn't that that wasn't the song but anyway it had like a weird pink something. song and yeah. like yeah it I was like a very buddy cup ish kind of trailer which was weird and like her hair was beating up Eugene and all this stuff and so I was just like this looks dumb yeah. I don't know if I'm into this I don't know but dad and I went and saw it and I laughed so hard and so loud and so often in that theater that my father was like hitting me, sitting next to me, like <laughs> slapping me on the arm, being like, shut up, shut up, stop it. You're embarrassing me. That's and I just I couldn't help it. It yeah. was so good. It's pretty delightful. And it, it was also the first movie I ever saw in 3D. Oh, my gosh. Yep. I wish that I had seen it in 3D. We'll get to that because yeah. there were some mm-hmm. scenes when that was really great and there yes. were some scenes when it was kind of nauseating. Yeah. So, I, you know what? Yeah. That, yeah. They were figuring out the 3D thing. Yeah, we were figuring for sure, for yeah. sure. Okay, how much is too much? Yeah, how much? Most of it is too <laughs> much. Most frankly, of it is too much. It turns out <laughs> you yeah. just need occasional scenes, right? Um, okay, so the movie opens up. We get this beautiful panning shot across this amazing forest, and you guys, the visuals in this movie are amazing. Really, really beautiful, start so to finish. Good, yeah, so so good. It's this was um, the first CGI fairy tale that Disney had done. Obviously, before this, we've had yeah. Toy Story, the Toy Story films, and that's right. Uh, Finding Nemo probably at this point also. But the first princess movie in yeah. CGI. Also, the first Disney princess movie to earn a PG rating. Everything before this has been Which rated so G. so interesting. Yeah. yeah. And at first we were like, wait, why? And it seems like that's all got to be basically thematic. Because, I like, think it's thematic very... and then 
Gothel does straight up like gut Eugene. Yeah, Flynn, there's blood, and then and there's, there's, there's blood, and you see the blood. Yeah. Like it's not. I mean, you don't see it on the knife because that that's really extreme. But I mean, like the, his shirt clearly is he's bleeding through yeah. all that. So that's pretty extreme. Mm-hmm. So that's probably why we got the PG instead of the G. Um, so we're painting across. Like there's yeah, the visuals are beautiful. Uh, the the visual director of the film. They wanted it to look like a 3D version of traditional hand animation. They wanted it to look like a storybook. And there's a particular painting. um, It's called The Swing. And actually, when you watch Frozen and you see Anna bouncing around during For the First Time in Forever, she jumps up in front of a painting of the girl on the swing. That painting is what inspired the art style for Tangled. That's wonderful. Yeah. Wow. So that's kind of cool. So we've got like this very gorgeous, very beautiful, like just the the soft, like, I don't want to say pastels, but just like the soft backgrounds, but yes. then also all of the detail that we're getting, the mm-hmm. very rich detail that we're getting. Very classical um, style. Very classical style. And then we start with a voiceover. We hear Zachary Levi playing. Who uh, just did excellent work. So good. He did such, a good such job. excellent work in this. That, that's one of the things I remember is that after I heard At Last I See the Light, mm-hmm. I looked up to see who did the voice work because um, I knew that, that Zachary Levi did Flynn Rider, but I wanted yeah. to see who was his singing voice. Right. And when I realized it was actually him, my mind was blown. Yep. Actually yeah. him and he actually was Mandy Moore. Wonderful. And, and I definitely knew it was Mandy yeah. Moore, obviously. Mandy like, Moore is so cute. In she's this movie. really delightful. She does such a good yeah. job. Yeah. And she's just just a little poppy sometimes a in, little instead bit. of the classic mm-hmm. princess sound but because it fits the character of Rapunzel so mm-hmm. well I have no problems with that it's I absolutely really agree. darling totally agree yeah so Flynn tells us that this is a story of how he died don't worry it's actually a really fun story and it's mostly not even about me and so uh, immediately we're drawn to this charming man yeah a little bit cute. yeah mm-hmm. the self-deprecating humor and so we get Rapunzel's backstory well first we get that there was this witch called Gothel who mm-hmm. found this magical flower centuries ago and centuries ago yeah. and figured out somehow that you can sing this song this to particular this flower song. maybe this she particular was magical song. along I, feel like I don't she's know. Got I mean, like he calls her. her a witch. Yeah. So there must be something. I don't know. Maybe there was like a tiny play card in front of the flower that was like, here's how to use this magic flower. <laughs> I have several. Here's the thing, guys. I love this movie with all my heart and soul. Um, when I first saw Enchanted, which I think came out two or three years before this one, oh. uh, it pulled me away from my love for The Little Mermaid for about a weekend. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I saw this movie, this was the first time in my life. I was 22 years old when this movie came out. That was the first time that I was like, no, my favorite Disney princess is Rapunzel. Wow. Yeah. So that, that was a big deal. It was a big deal yeah. for me yeah wow um so i love 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 this movie very very much it is absolutely one of my favorites uh do have a few questions again this is a running theme now i got some questions regarding our villain all right <laughs> so you go liz yeah. you're a witch during the renaissance uh, period excuse me <laughs> listen <laughs> hypothetical situation hypothetically okay <laughs> you're a witch during the renaissance era and you find yes. this magic flower okay. that will keep you young and beautiful forever uh-huh do you leave that flower there on the cliffside and put it under a bushel? Here's the thing. As a gardener, I can tell you that some plants do not like it when you transplant them. They will go into shock oh. and they will die. So yes, I do. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then I take back everything I just yeah, said. Yeah, I really liked her plan where she covered... The only the flaw in her plan was that plants need sunlight to survive. Well, it's a drop of sunlight. It is a plant That's true. So it has sunlight, sunlight within itself. So yeah, her plan seemed pretty solid, actually. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great job, Gothel. So far you're the best villain we've had <laughs> and I will stand by that forever throughout the rest of the film so centuries passed um, canonically I believe it is about 400 years and wow. so the kingdom of Corona which means sun yeah and not also only is unfortunately crappy Mexican beer. a crappy Mexican beer which has always frustrated me, but we're not... Anyway, that's yeah. neither here nor there. It's never named in the movie, but it is like in the art books and things like that. So the Kingdom of Corona is built up across the way, and we meet the king and queen, who do not have names. The queen's going to have a baby. Um, I and love the king and queen, though, may I just so say. Wonderful. Every time they're on screen, I'm absolutely captivated. And the fact that they have absolutely no Zero lines, lines is fascinating. It's done so they well. They have... You, I mean, and there is still storytelling so going on, much story. even without that dialogue. So it's much like story. when we watched the episode of Hush from Buffy the yes. Vampire Slayer, and it's like you've got all this storytelling going on, zero dialogue. Uh-huh. Yeah, an excellent um, challenge as a creator. Yeah, and so it's just, oh my gosh, it's so good. They're so good. They're so great. This, I think, is our first Disney princess with both parents. Oh, yeah. Well, yep. kind of. I mean,. Well, they're not really being her parents, though. Mother Gothel is no, being her No, but parent. they're not dead, at least. Okay, they're not dead. They're not that, dead. Okay, all right. <laughs> sure. 
Um, so do you know about the original Rapunzel uh, fairy tale? Somewhat, yes. I remember, uh, this was another one that I remember there being some kind of weird live action one back in the 90s with, I want to say Shelley Long or Carol Kane. Maybe Carol Kane. I don't know. But somebody. And okay. uh, yeah, it was a live action one. And I watched it a few times. Huh. And I remember the prince falling from the tower into the thorn, thorn bushes, bushes yep, and, and being blinding. blinded. Yes. And then something about a swamp. I don't remember yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, so just really quickly, super short. The original fairy tale of Rapunzel, the reason why she's called Rapunzel is that's the German radishes. word for radishes. Yes. When her mother was pregnant, they uh, she was not a princess. Her parents were not royalty. Right. They, it was just a Poppers. farmer and his wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they lived next door to a witch who grew a lot of radishes, and yes. the mother would tell... Uh, uh, her husband to go and get the radish leaves for her and so he would jump the fence and grab all the radishes and then the witch found out and said I'm taking your baby and so took like continued to give him the radishes that the mother was craving and then stole the baby mm-hmm. and then fled off into the night and locked her up into a tower she did not have magical hair she just had really really long hair that she didn't right. cut um and she had a beautiful voice. She would sing, and uh, while uh, the witch in the story was off gallivanting, doing something, and uh, Rapunzel was singing, a passing prince heard her singing, climbed up the tower, fell in love with her, got her pregnant. That's right. And that's how the witch found out. And that's out. how the witch found out. Yeah. And so the witch cut off all of her hair and banished her to a swamp and oh, then waited for the prince to come yes. back. Yes. Prince Throughout comes the back. Hair. Yep. Uh, shoves the prince out the yes. window. He lands in the brambles, blinds himself, and then he wanders the earth for searching for Rapunzel. Like five years. It's a long time. That's and right. And then finally finds Rapunzel and her five year old twins wow. in the swamp. And then they live happily ever after. Rapunzel cries over him and her magical teeth because of love him. restore yeah. his sight right yeah. yep which is that's a neat story anyway it's a I like weird, that story on neat its own story. Yep. yeah that's fine I prefer Disney's version a thousand percent oh really more. I really do I mean this yeah. is fun there's a lot going on in this movie though there is yes so uh, Gothel uh, comes in she steals Rapunzel away Rapunzel is born with super super blonde hair and bright green eyes um, Rapunzel, uh, Gothel steals her away takes her to a tower that's like a day's trip away from the kingdom of Corona. Listen, if you're going to kidnap a princess, <laughs> there's like a whole wide world. They're like an island in the middle of the ocean. You could literally pick any direction and go and like not be discovered ever. And also, I mean, okay, do you think that Rapunzel's name is actually Rapunzel? Do you think that King and Queen of Corona named their daughter Radishes? Or do you think that that is, I mean, like, does it matter in this story? Because is that the name that Gothel gave her? Did Gothel wait around to hear what the baby's name was? I like that Gothel named her actually okay. because that is something that she would li- like, you know, an obscure word for mm-hmm. that meant radish is something that she would do as someone who is obviously like her magic is is somehow wrapped up in, in nature. Yeah. Yes. It yeah, seems yeah. to be anyway. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to go with that. Mother okay. Gothel named her. Sure. I like that. That's yeah. cool. Um but yeah, you she was only a, like a couple of days old. A when few she days was old, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, obviously, a cartoon baby does not look the same as a real life right. three day old baby. But from for, but from the story, yeah. and that's and of course they wouldn't have known if it was a boy or a girl. So mm-hmm. yeah, sometimes it would take a while before people named. So yeah, and in fact, back in the day, it actually it was quite common to wait a long time before you named a baby because infant you, mortality yeah. was so high. Mm-hmm. Yep. Also, before we had ultrasounds, people would have their baby showers after having the baby so you can know whether you need to go. bring blue things or pink things. Um, but anyway, so Gothel just parks her in a tower just a stone's throw from the castle, could have gone literally anywhere, and then goes ahead and tells her what her actual birthday is and could have lied about that too. And Here's the thing about this. Okay. I have... And I'm being nitpicky, and no. these are the things that people like nitpick about this film. That's it's okay. always like, well, why didn't Gothel tell her a different birthday? Because think- we needed her to want to be at the Lanterns and have that be significant. That's why. I personally think that Mother Gothel is closest when it comes to like um, witches that we've seen in, in the past from uh, to the, her incarnation in Into the Woods, where she does have this desire mm-hmm. for companionship. And she does, a part of her wants to be a mother. She's just really oh. bad at it because she's such a narcissist. Oh, how interesting. Like, I think, yeah, like, I think that she believes these things that she's telling Rapunzel. Mm-hmm. When they have their little, I love you most, and I, mm-hmm. you know, like, she, this is the only version of love that Gothel knows. Mm-hmm. But I do think that she thinks of herself 
as Rapunzel's mother and not her keeper because she could have imprisoned her. Sure, absolutely. She absolutely could have been kept like a dog, you know, right. in but a instead, crate, she basically. She brushed her hair, took care of her, got her all these art supplies, yes. took a three-day trip to get her the white shells to make that paint. Right, yeah. Let her paint all over the walls, mm-hmm. which parents generally are not fans of. And some of that, of course, was just, you know, to keep her happy, to keep her mm-hmm. sedated so she wouldn't be trying to escape. Right. But... Again, I think that mostly it was because she liked this idea of playing house with this daughter that she had found. I'm and really okay with for that herself. because there are a number of moments throughout the movie that show that Rapunzel legitimately loves Gothel, yes. like legitimately, yes. really does love her mother. Absolutely, and it's it's that is what makes this woman. So, so much wrong. worse than the wicked stepmother. Yeah. In, well, any wicked stepmother than Ursula, than, you know, um, uh, Dr. Facilia. I mean, like, she is the worst villain. Yeah. Because it's hard to watch. It's yeah. so hard to watch. I don't even have kids, and it's hard to watch. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had a super not great mom, and so it's hard for me to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, the biggest, t- and, and we'll get there, but I'll go ahead and say now the biggest tell is that whenever. Um, uh, the pa- the magic spell has been broken and Rapunzel's hair has been cut off and Gothel trips and is falling out the window. Rapunzel reaches for her, you guys. Yeah. Do you remember that? Watch this movie again. Rapunzel definitely reaches out to get her. Yeah. Because she loves her mom. Yeah. This woman has raised her for the last 18 years. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Thematically, it's a really a complicated and lovely it movie. It really is. So, and there's mm-hmm. a, it has a lot to say about identity, too, mm-hmm. which I think is great. It really does, yes. Okay, so then we see that Rapunzel is growing up in this tower, and she sees that the lantern, the floating lights appear every night, every year on her birthday, and she will sneak off to get to the window and watch this happening. Um, and then we see Rapunzel and her super-duper best buddy, Pascal. Guys, greatest chameleon in the history of the world. I it was a frog. <laughs> <laughs> here's your pan. Here's your frog. I love every Nuance. time that <laughs> Flynn calls him a frog. It's it just great. makes me so happy. They're just like so low key lines. Yep. This I couldn't stop laughing watching this movie again yeah. today. You guys, I haven't seen this movie in a number of months, and it just it brought me so much joy. It's pretty lovely. So Rapunzel and Pascal are playing hide and seek. We get that really great song, When Will My Life Begin, mm-hmm. which is which the is an most excellent I sequence. want it's song such a great, ever. It's a great number. It's yeah. a great number. It's mm-hmm. absolutely wonderful. Uh, there is a YouTube video that exists out there in the universe um, where I and my friend Megan did a parody of that song. Oh, that's right. Called Where Is My Fairy Tale. That's right. This was before yep, yep. I got engaged to Nathan. <laughs> And so we will put a link to that in the show notes. But yeah, I rewrote all of the lyrics for it and we just do a little karaoke thing. It's Uh cute and dumb and fun. So Mm -hmm. we'll make sure to put that in the show notes for you. It's pretty amusing. Um, But I love that song. I love When Will My Life Begin. It is an excellent, like, cleaning up your house song. It is, yeah. Um, Well, we learned so much about Rapunzel. About, like, how she's made a life for herself in Mm -hmm. this little tower. Mm -hmm. And she's got all of her hobbies and her crafts. She knits. talented. She crochets. Yeah. Paper machés. She reads books she mm-hmm. paints she's Bates. an odd wonk <laughs> Rapunzel is an odd wonk you guys I think that's probably right yep she she's just doesn't have Twitter <laughs> <laughs> it's just her and Pascal that's it <laughs> uh, so at this point we see just how long her hair has gotten yeah. There is some math that is done. Uh, the animators say that it is approximately 70 feet in length. Wow. And uh, there, some people did some math about like how much an individual strand of hair weighs, and blonde wow. hair is lighter than most other hair colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has, according to the animators, 100,000 strands of hair. Woo. All together, 10 and a half pounds of hair Damn. is how much her Damn. hair weighs. She's got a strong neck. That, okay, first of all, yes. Secondly, pretty sure Rapunzel has super strength. Like, and we'll get there when we talk about it, but I mean, like, this girl is ridiculously strong. She steps in between Flynn and Maximus the horse, <laughs> and like, and I mean, just how, anyway. It's she is magical. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, a magical, she's magical, magical girl. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So then we finally meet uh, our narrator from the beginning of the film. We meet Flynn Rider and his pals, the Stabbington Brothers. I'm not making that up. They're actually <laughs> called that. You see their name on their wanted poster. But we see that these guys are sneaking into the castle to steal the crown, which they do. And then they start running off. And then the palace guards are chasing after them. And uh, the head captain of the palace guard hollers at his two guys to go, you know, and, and, and flank them and get them. And then Maximus the horse does the same thing to the <laughs> horses. 
<laughs> and he's my favorite horse. Maximus is pretty great. I love him so he's much. He's really funny. Yeah, it's it's a pretty delightful piece of animation. Really he's excellent comedic relief. Yeah, it's a little ridiculous how good he is. Um, so this is really neat about Flynn, and I'm going to go ahead and just read this verbatim from the IMDb trivia page. The character design of Flynn came from the process called the Hot Man Meeting by Nathan (laughs) Grano and Byron Howard, during which they set up a meeting with all of the female employees of the studio in one room and asked them for their opinions of what made a man good looking in order to create Flynn's character design with features such as eye color, hair color, style, and body type. Video footage showed concept art and photos of various male celebrities, including Johnny Depp, Hugh Jackman, Brad Pitt, David Beckham, and Gene Kelly on the walls of his room. Wow. Yes. So basically they got all the ladies. I love together. that Gene Kelly's in there. Yeah, I and they were like, Gene Kelly. "What makes a man hot?" And they built Flynn Rider. And I got to tell you, for a cartoon character, nailed it, nailed it. <laughs> really attractive man. Also, the oldest Disney prince. Um, he is really? in his mid to late twenties. I want to say that he's like twenty six or twenty seven, almost ten years older than Rapunzel. Huh? Yeah, I would not have necessarily guessed that. Yeah, especially because he, uh, like the the two characters. Rapunzel and Flynn or Eugene are both really searching for their identity. Mm -hmm. But it's very interesting because like Rapunzel, I mean, she is looking for hers. Mm -hmm. She can't find it. And I love when she says, you know, I have this feeling that the lanterns are meant for me. Right. Yeah. Which is so neat. And then you have Flynn or Eugene who knows his backstory. He knows exactly where he comes from, but he's trying to create something new. He, he doesn't, he rejects Mm -hmm. who he is his actual self is right and wants exactly. to make this new one and then we have rapunzel who doesn't know her actual self mm-hmm. and wants to find it so mm-hmm. it's really lovely this movie is so good you guys oh my yeah. gosh uh so then we get to uh gothel comes back we have the mother knows best song um mm-hmm. we, which is very broadway i like that one even super, has a spotlight like, yeah it's very broadway it's really, really cute fun. it's really great i really enjoy it Gothel sitting there and saying things like, oh, you know what I see when I look in this mirror? A beautiful, strong, confident young woman. Oh, look, and you're here too. She's the worst. She's really bad. She's the worst. Yeah. She's a narcissistic parent who makes everything about herself. No matter what it is, everything is about her, about her, about her. Mm. Nothing is about Rapunzel. Nothing is about Rapunzel's happiness. It's all, and even whenever it is, it's look what a good mother I am giving you this thing that makes you happy. Yep. Um and the whole oh so you want me to be the bad guy now great now I'm the bad guy and all of that mm-hmm. and it's just uh like if you had a parent like that it's so hard to watch because you're just like this uh, uh it's the yeah. worst the worst Ugh. the song is really fun though and I really enjoy it and the songs in this movie are just so good like all of them there's not a bad song whenever we get to Frozen there's going to be a part where I have to like just whistle past the troll song because what were we doing? <laughs> we'll talk about that more later. But in this film, there's not a single song that I don't enjoy then. And that isn't like really, really great. And it's, oh my gosh, I love this movie so much. So then we get a lot more, um, just hilarity with, uh, Flynn escaping from the guards and Maximus chasing him. Maximus goes and hides behind that rock and then pulls down the tree branch. And it's shaped like a horse. (laughs) And it makes me so happy. I think that moment, that particular moment, is the thing that had me laughing so hard in the theater that my dad was like covering my mouth. (laughs) You're a bearded me child. It was, yes. It was funny. It just, it gets me Mm -hmm. every single time. (laughs) Every time. I love her up in the tower with Flynn when he gets up there and shoving him in the closet and whacking him with the frying pan. And, and so she kills him like four times. <laughs> I mean, Disney magic. Cast iron skillets are heavy. Oh, yeah. And if They're I were to weapon. whack a guy in the back of the head as hard as I could, yeah. he's dead. She cracked his skull. <laughs> his skull is like floating about inside oh, of his gross. skin. Yeah, gross. But that's just his reality now. That's his life. When she heals him with her hair later, she's healing more than just the little cut on his hand. <laughs> Yeah, and with Flynn being so smarmy and funny and, like, flirty, it makes me really happy. Um, So smarmy. I also really like in that scene, they do a great job of going back and forth between making Rapunzel look really childlike mm -hmm. and really elegant and beautiful, just depending on When she steps out of the shadows and the light comes down on her. Yeah, just like... No wonder he's Ridiculous. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Um, Rapunzel's entire demeanor, like, the way that she acts, the way that she speaks, um, it was the first time that I ever felt like I could be a Disney princess. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, and I think that it is because, I mean, you know, her, the... 
it is. This is not like a classic Disney film. We are no. not. This is absolutely not like a Snow White, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty kind of thing. I mean, like this is a very contemporary sort of yes. attitude and feeling. Yeah. And I felt that way. I mean, like watching Rapunzel on screen, I'm like, I could be this. I could do this. Mm-hmm. Like I could, I could be a princess. This is great. And the same <laughs> thing happened when I saw Frozen yeah. and the way that they had Anna being portrayed with just the way, particularly whenever she's like, wait, what? And again, I'm yeah. sorry to keep going back and forth, but the movies are very similar and very close to me in my yeah. heart. Um, but I really enjoyed that. I loved that we we took we we kind of stepped away just a smidge mm-hmm. from like the over traditional fairy tale kind of thing, and we yes. were like, we're just gonna tell this story and let these characters yeah. be really relatable. Although it certainly has those elements and those calls. Oh, absolutely, to the old yes. Disney classics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it was fun picking those out. Yes, yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. And I love in the scene too. We see uh, how much Rapunzel is a believer and how much Flynn is a skeptic. Yes, I love that when she's like. Something brought you, brought you here. Call it what you want. Fate or destiny. A horse. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. Yeah. It it's really lovely. is so great. And then, so she gets out of the tower and uh, we get that entire lovely sequence where she, it's like the best day ever sequence. She's spinning around. She's like <laughs> laughing and then she's crying and then she's laughing and then she's crying. Great so somebody sequence. on Twitter. I'm pretty sure it was Garrett Asia. Uh, you guys got to you got to be a part of the Odd Wonk Tangled Live tweet earlier yes, this week. Uh-huh. Uh, I didn't get to because I had to work. Yeah. Um, but so uh, by earlier this week, we mean months ago. Months ago, yeah. <laughs> but hey, future people, <laughs> it's like May 29th when we're recording this. I don't know what day it is now. Uh, August something. Um, anyway. <laughs> So somebody mentioned on Twitter, I'm pretty sure it was Garrett. Uh, I just get a notification that says, and here we have the role of Rapunzel being played by Sarah Kate. And I was just like, what are you talking about? And somebody goes, oh, when she gets out of the tower. That is not the first time that joke has been made about like me in particular. Yes, that is basically my entire life. (laughs) Always, constantly, always. Yeah. Exhausting. Uh, Quite. (laughs) Gets a little better every day. (laughs) So then we get to the snuggly duckling. We oh, we see Gothel finds Maximus, and then she runs back to the tower. Right. Sees that Rapunzel isn't there. She's legitimately freaking out. And I think that you're right, Liz. I think that it's yeah. not just because her source of eternal youth is gone. I although think that's that, huge. Although that's, that's big. That's a huge that's a part of thing. Yeah. yeah, I will die without this girl. But her daughter is missing. This yeah. girl that she's been raising for 18 years is missing, and, mm-hmm. and she doesn't know. Did the guards take her? Like she doesn't know what. And then she finds like the satchel and sees Flynn Rider's picture and all this yes. stuff. Legitimately freaking out. And it's difficult to say how much of that is my fountain of youth is gone and my daughter is missing yep. and I don't know where she is. Very Cell phones mixed don't up. exist. It yeah, is. Yeah, they're very mixed up in her My head. daughter is my fountain of youth. Yes. Ooh, that's rough. And that is real. You see those moms who are like living vicariously through oh, their golly. young children with, you know, making a huge deal out of prom night and spending $100 a month on fixing their, you know, 14-year-old's hair or whatever Right, or like, you know, talent shows, they're dancing, they're, yeah. they're cheerleading, they're acting, they're singing, whatever it yep. is, and just, this yeah. This is absolutely that. Oh, golly. Guys, the reason why this movie is so good is because it's weirdly, really true to yes. life. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> I yeah. can't with this. Okay. Yep. So we get to the Snuggly Duckling, and... <laughs> Which is a super fun scene. It's a although really great scene. I, I personally think that all of this kind of muddies the waters of the movie. Mm-hmm. I could honestly do without all of the Viking guys. Like they're funny and oh, yeah, I like yeah, them yeah. No, and the song I is great. I totally agree with you, yeah. But story wise, I could probably do without if it. If I were to skip a song on the soundtrack, it would usually this this would be one. the one. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we get there, we have a lot of fun. Um we get Rapunzel and Flynn. Through the secret tunnel, and uh-huh. then we're running through the cave. And another big another, sequence. Yeah, another big the, sequence. Yeah. I love that. It's like a video is, game. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so we're like, then we're like, yeah, going through the ravine, and the water's falling down, and then Rapunzel, like, holding Eugene, who I guarantee is like 170 to 200 pounds. Well, yeah, but she's just in her hair as like a pulley system. So right. But I mean, bit, like, still, like, she's like helping him out. And anyway, this girl's ridiculously strong. And yes. also, I love that they're like Quite on the edge. The guards run in, the Stabbington brothers are down there, and there's Maximus, and Flynn's just like, nobody here likes me. And Rapunzel's <laughs> like, hold this, slams the pan into Flynn's waist, and then, like, just takes control. And yeah. it's just like, I know what to do. Do. Yep, I got this somehow. Yeah, I, I, books. I, she's the best. Yes, she's read she's a ton best. of adventure books. <laughs> um, yeah, she's she's studied how to be the best Disney princess ever. Uh. A primer. <laughs> she just had it. Well, I mean, she read Snow White and Sleeping Beauty and Cinderella that is guaranteed, very true. and she yeah. was like, "I can do better than this." <laughs> um, the dam breaks because uh, Maximus will not be stopped. <laughs> He's right? a force to be reckoned with. Uh-huh. 
And then uh, this is the first time in a movie ever that something is falling down to crush the protagonist, and the protagonist had a legitimate reason to continue running straight yes. and not off to the side. <laughs> this is the only film in film history. Everything else, it's like, why didn't they dash sideways? <laughs> why? I mean, it's why. But here, it's because they had to get into that little cave area. Right. Uh huh. They jump in there. It starts filling up with water. Eugene tries to get them out. He can't. It's too dark. He uh, ex- and we keep just switching back and forth between Flynn and Eugene. Um, but yeah. uh, he's still Flynn at this point. Exactly. Yes. Comes. Yes. So yeah. then he tells her. You know, she Rapunzel is crying. She's sorry. Yeah. You know, it's all my fault. And you, are, my heart is breaking. You poor yes. poor child. Uh, and she says, "I'm so sorry, Flynn." And then he says, "Eugene," <laughs> and she goes, "Rightfully so." What? <laughs> Eugene fits Herbert. Which means, at the end of this film, when they are married, her name is Rapunzel Fitzherbert. <laughs> and that, that's the way. That's the best. Mm-hmm. That's the greatest. Do you change your name when you're royalty and you get married? I don't know. Maybe he changes his name to whatever Rapunzel's last name was. Corona. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. I have no idea. <laughs> we know nothing about 17th monarchies. century yeah. German monarchies. <laughs> Surprise, so sue surprise. us. <laughs> uh, we get to the beautiful, just the beautifully rendered scene where they're, they they get out of the tunnel and they pop up in the creek and like it's starting to become sunset yes. and the water is just, I, the scene is gorgeous. The art in this movie is it's so true. ridiculously the scene gorgeous. It's really beautiful. It's and the insane. two of them getting to know each other is really it's beautiful. It's really, really too. great. Yeah. yeah. Ex- um, expressing vulnerabilities mm-hmm. and he tells his true backstory. Yeah. How he got the name Flynn Rider. Yeah. And she has that great line I think Eugene Fitzherbert is way better than Flynn Rider. Right. Exactly. Like, well, you'd be the first. Yeah. And it's just lovely. Again, it's that identity. Like they, mm-hmm. For the first time, someone is seeing them for who they really are. And, and it's, it's really, really excellent because up to this point, I don't think that we've had our prince and prince. Well, Flynn isn't a prince, but he will be when he marries her. But like, right. we haven't had our princess and her dude like sitting down and like just having a conversation. You're absolutely right. Like that has not happened before this. Mm-hmm. Every other time it's just been instant. I'm in love with him yes. and just need to be with him. Talking right. to you, Ariel, talking to you, Aurora. Mm-hmm. Um, or I mean like Tiana and Naveen kind of talked, but they were mostly just arguing. They weren't really getting to know each other. And... We don't have to talk about that. Okay, great. Thanks. But we can, I do like how like Cinderella and the Prince, they had their one night, but at mm-hmm. least shows them strolling together in the garden. You Listen, I know that, that you're going to be fighting really hard for your Look, girl Cinderella. Cinderella is my girl. I love you, Rapunzel, and you're probably going to win this one, you know, but hands down. I'm I'm just saying that Cinderella had some time with her prince too, at least a little bit where they were like actually Like 4 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Actually communicating, which is nice. That's fine. I mean, they were mostly dancing and making goo-goo eyes at each other. They did, as I guess, stroll I through know. the courtyard. They had the one waltz, and okay. then they spent the evening strolling through the courtyard and in all the right, gardens right. and talking to each other. Fine, anyway. fine. A <laughs> little bit of headcanon, but whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying that textually we have evidence within this film. <laughs> okay, fair. Very fair. I also love um, just Rapunzel's physicality, the way that she moves. I love when she, like, runs her hands down her hair and is, like, holding her hair up against her head whenever she's nervous. Yes. I love the way that she moves her hands. I love the way that she dances in the marketplace scene, which is such an amazing and beautiful, wonderful scene. Yes. Um, I This is, you know, we haven't gotten... It's so different to watch a 2D movie to see th- I mean like cuz with Ariel it was impressive that like her hair followed physics under the water, right? Yeah. Because they were they would watch videos of uh female astronauts in space and the way that their hair moved. Wow. And they that's how they got Ariel's hair animations Crazy. down and Tritons and everything like mm-hmm. that. Um but it's so different to watch Rapunzel and the way that she's moving and and just it's it's as impressive as when Amy Adams playing Giselle was moving the way that a Disney princess would move yeah. in real life. Mm-hmm. And it's just super cool and I love it and it's yeah. just so, so great. And I do agree that that town sequence, it is very reminiscent of The Little Mermaid, which is one of my yes. favorite scenes mm-hmm. too when she first goes to town. And it is delightful. That the music, music is wonderful. Is so All great. the colors. And yes. It's just joyful. It's yes. such a joyful scene. Another nitpicky thing. Rapunzel goes into the town. <laughs> she looks up at the mosaic on the wall. We get that Ferris Bueller's Day Off scene, but switching between Cameron and the painting. And that baby in that mosaic is blonde. Guys, 
watch this scene again. Look around. There is not a single other blonde person in this <laughs> entire kingdom. And I just learned there are 3,000 people in this sequence. 3,000 animated characters like yep. within this sequence. None of them but Rapunzel are blonde. How did this blonde angel that no one has ever seen just waltz into town and immediately wasn't just like there's the lost princess that might be the sun her. princess that, that you might be the princess of the sun i don't know it was like the celebration everybody was having a grand old time they must have drinking. good wine Who knows? yeah exactly yeah. yeah eugene mentions it later yep um but yeah we have this amazing beautiful wonderful sequence when she and yep. flynn are dancing together mm-hmm. and just the music i love that music that music absolutely will be on the wedding playlist uh-huh. um my wedding is tangled themed by the yeah. way you guys so this um, might be a thing for you it is yeah <laughs> i mean we're not doing like the full-blown thing but i mean like the colors are inspired by it yeah. and uh my save the dates had tangled art on it and uh, the guest book, we're not doing a guest book. I printed out a poster that has uh, Rapunzel and Eugene in the boat on the bottom. And then people are going to sign their names on lanterns. It's mm-hmm. like lanterns all over the page. And it's really lovely and beautiful and blah, 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 whatever. Uh, Nathan likes this movie well enough to allow me <laughs> to have a Tangled themed wedding, which I'm very appreciative of. Definitely. Um, so we get to, uh, we start heading towards the most beautiful scene Literally in all of Disney, right? I really think you're right. I've said I think before, that before this, it had to be the ballroom scene from Beauty and the Beast. Uh, and you know, it depends. I, I think, mm-hmm. well, uh, and this is always going to be something that's subjective. I sure, love the absolutely. ballroom scene in Beauty and the Beast for sure. It's beautiful. Um, I always loved a whole new world. That was a beautiful sequence too. Right. And I've said before, it only takes a couple of seconds. But for me, just that really quick um, piece of animation when the fairy godmother gives Cinderella her dress. Oh, yeah. With all the sparkles mm-hmm. and like the ball gown just like blooms out around her is one of my favorites, too. Right. But absolutely, when I first saw the lantern scene. And this, you got to see it in 3D. I got to see it in 3D. Uh. And really, it was something else. Oh, I mean, man. it was so moving Mm -hmm. because you really did feel like you were there there was an intimacy to it Mm -hmm. and it was so moving because um wrapped up in that remember right before you see the king and the queen you see the king and the queen and again and there's no tender with each other and he's got that grieving that single man here oh it's it's really lovely. So you're already moved yeah. by that. And to see this whole town and just this idea of like the light and the hope that mm-hmm. this princess will return and the mm-hmm. hope that things will be restored. It's been years. Yeah. Really, really beautiful. And they're out there on the water and she starts to get that sense of fear. And she's like, I've been waiting my whole life, 18 years, wondering how it would feel in this moment when the lights finally rise and yeah. what if it's not everything I dreamed of. And again, that's all about her identity. Yeah. And what then, if I disappoint myself? Not what only if that, I'm not something yeah, yeah. special? Yeah. Not only that, but she says, what if it is? What and if what it if is everything that I've been Then what do I do? Dreaming? How do what I go do I back? Do? Yeah. And then Eugene looks at her and says, well, I guess that's a good part. You get to find a new dream. Which is so true. It's we are so never great. done. We've never arrived. Yeah. yeah. You really think like you're that. there. And then, that, I mean, like, that's that's a trope that we see in films and stories and movies all the time is you give your protagonist everything that they wanted and it's not what they and wanted. It's not exactly what they not wanted. Not exactly what yeah. they wanted. And mm-hmm. I'm glad that we didn't quite do that with Rapunzel. I mean, like, it's, it's similar but different, right? Yes. Like, she's yes. just, she has it that fear. It opens the door. It really yes. does kick mm-hmm. open the door for her to, to claim her destiny. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's such a wonderful, tender scene between them. Yes. Um, uh, before this, we had seen Gothel showed up again and gave the satchel with the crown to Rapunzel and was like, hey, he doesn't really love you. He's after this. Um, which oh, I only yeah, bring up right. because Rapunzel turns to him. Dur- first of all, back. at last I see the light is one of my very favorite Disney songs. It's really, I, I get goosebumps every time. The It is it's great. Zachary Levi and Mandy Moore do amazing, amazing work. Uh-huh. It is a little poppier, but again, it's these characters are a little more contemporary, contemporary. in their personalities yeah, and things sure. like that. Um, this will be the song that Nathan and I have our first dance to oh, as husband and wife. I might cry then. I might Stone too. Stone Cold Liz. Yeah, Stone Cold Liz just <laughs> weeping in the corner. <laughs> I don't know if I'll weep in the corner, but I no, might cry. That's what I demand. Who knows? That's what uh, I want. I'll do my best. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> No, no, no. If you just get a little misty eyed, I'll be okay. perfectly fine with that. Excellent. Um, but so in the middle of that song, Rapunzel turns to Eugene and says, hey, I, I should have given you this earlier, but I was scared and I'm, I'm not scared anymore. And he doesn't even look at it, doesn't no. even check as the crown in here, sets it aside yep. and hands her 
He brought them two lanterns. lanterns. He brought them two That's lanterns right. and hands it yeah. to her. They toss them up there. The lanterns are dancing around each other. And then there's a lantern that floats over to Rapunzel. And then Which she keeps the it one. from landing in the water. Uh-huh. That is her parents' lantern. Yep. It's, it's got, got the big the old purple sun on it. Mm-hmm. And it's beautiful. They found her, kind yeah. of. Yep. It's really lovely. So then we get, oh, uh, I just saw in my notes, uh, we, we breezed past it really quick with talking about how we see the king and the queen together and the king is crying. My note, just in all caps, says king crying. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's really beautiful. It's really yeah. hard. And then when I saw this movie for the first time with Alan, uh, Alan had never seen the movie. And again, Alan is sitting behind me and I'm sitting on the floor watching it. I'm like, no, you had to watch this movie. It's so, so good. Uh, when we get to the part where... Flint, where Eugene tells Rapunzel, you were my new dream. <laughs> I hear behind me this really loud <laughs> <laughs> I turn around, Alan is weeping profusely and yeah. he's just like no, no, I can't. I just no. He was her, new, she was his new dream. Anyway, this this movie has something for everyone, I guess is what I'm saying. Yes, absolutely true. Yes. So we get away from the lantern scene. Eugene sees the Stabbington brothers. God, what a great name. It's a pretty cool it's name. It's a pretty good yeah. name. I bet Look it was just guys. a joke in the writer's room. And then they were like, now nah, we're keeping that. <laughs> it's a good joke. So he sees the Stabbington brothers, uh, goes over there, tries to give them the crown. Uh, Gothel had told them about Rapunzel's yeah. magic hair. They tie Eugene to the boat and send him off to the castle. Uh, the Stabbington brothers tried to get hold of Rapunzel. And uh, they're like, oh, yeah, he totally took the crown and ran. And, uh, mm. you know, filling her worst fears and showing yes. her the boat and all this stuff. And it's a really bad deal. And the first time you're watching this movie, you're like, oh, WTH, what's going on here? Yeah. Um, so they try to get her. Rapunzel runs away, uh, nearly gets her neck snapped by having her braid caught on that branch i mean like ow Oof, like dang yeah. woof i realize that she's got like the strongest neck muscles in the entire say, universe she was carrying 10 and a half pounds around all day she's yeah, probably all right in a braid which i feel yeah. like would make it heavier no like, absolutely now it's heavier because like, yeah. before it was probably only like you know two it's two mostly on pounds. the ground at that ground. point yeah 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 insane anyway. Mm-hmm. anyway so then gothel shows up and beats up the stabbington brothers somehow that Magic. is she, never she frying pan did she have a frying pan? pan was magical. <laughs> All right. It really was. Everyone needs a cast iron skillet. They do. Not only good for cooking steaks, but great for home defense. That is correct. Oh, man. Um, so Rapunzel immediately runs to her mom. Immediately runs to her mom when she sees her there. Is like, you know, yeah. scared and alone and runs over to her mom. And her oh, mom's like, and then Rapunzel the says, I was wrong about everything. Yeah. And Gothel says, I know. I know. Yeah. Uh. I tried to tell you. I tried to tell you. Uh, Yeah. It's so heartbreaking to watch. So they go back to their tower. Uh, Flynn is going to be hanged. Right. Straight up Again, very dark. Super dark. He starts going through the castle, and then we get all of the Viking buddies from the Snuggly Ducking to show up. And um, my favorite part of that whole sequence is whenever we finally get Flynn out of the castle and onto the back of Maximus. Yes. And he starts talking. He's like, I think I've been wrong. We started off on the wrong foot. I've been wrong about you this entire time. I feel like maybe if we had just, and it comes to Maximus, he's just making that face. And Flynn's like, no, you're right. It's not the time. We, we don't have time. And so then <laughs> they escape the town. And uh, Maximus is running him back to the tower. Meanwhile, Rapunzel is there and Gothel is taking out the last flower and is trying to tell her, I mean, I told you, I warned you that this would happen. I warned you how cruel and terrible the world is. If there's ever anything good in it, the world will try to destroy it. Mm -hmm. And so leaves. But Rapunzel still has her little napkin with the sun symbol on it. Yep. And lies back and looks up and realizes that. It has been. It has always been the sun symbol yes. in everything, and which is another really cool it sequence. All her whole life, yeah. Which it is a wonderful sequence. It mm-hmm. gives me goosebumps too yeah. because I love this idea of a calling and mm-hmm. destiny. Because I, I mean, I, I believe in callings and destinies and God, and so this idea that there's just a moment when it all makes sense and mm-hmm. you feel like, okay, I understand what mm-hmm. I'm supposed to be doing and then nothing can stop you from doing it. And I, I love that moment. It's gorgeous. It's really great. My favorite part of that, I think, is how overwhelmed you see Rapunzel is because she stumbles and like clatters yeah. into her vanity. Yes. And I, I love that it's like a big deal uh-huh. um, and all of that. And so she comes back out. What's well, the thing on- she's been looking for? It's her identity. Yeah. 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 And when you finally figure that out, it's yes. kind of a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, yeah. So she gets out on the balcony and says, I'm the lost princess. And Gothel mm-hmm. is like, what have I told you about the mumbling? And then in the most baller move ever made by a Disney princess to date, <laughs> I'm the lost princess. Did I mumble mother or should I even call you that? 
<laughs> Who goes to dynamite? Like, mic drop. We are done. It was very cool. I like even more right after that when they have that little tussle, that little fight. Yeah. And the mirror breaks. Oh, yeah. Because there's so much symbolism. As a writer, I recognize that in the, the mirror breaking. Is that why you yelled, oh, wait, and, yes, started, and started furiously, furiously, furiously notes? taking notes? Okay, yeah, explain absolutely. to me what happened. Okay. Because that mirror, again, represents for Rapunzel, that search for identity. Remember mm-hmm. when she first put the crown on oh and my she God, was looking you're a in the mirror and she wasn't yes. quite sure? So her search for identity, like once that mirror has been broken, it's like it doesn't phase her or affect her at all because she knows her true self now. Mm-hmm. And then Mother Gothel, though, that mirror represents her vanity, which is now completely wow. broken. And this relationship with her daughter is completely broken and shattered. So not only do we have all that from the mirror, but then... When our boy Flynn or Eugene comes to cut her hair, he uses, uses the mirror. that broken shard of mirror to say, Oh my gosh, Liz, you're a freaking I genius. I see your identity, Rapunzel. I know your true value and who you are. I'm so impressed with you right it's now. I beautiful. That's it's really genius. well done. That's yeah. brilliant. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Yes. So Eugene gets there. Yeah. Hops into the tower. It's a trap. Sees Rapunzel chained up and, you know, gagged and all of this stuff. And Mother Gothel straight up shanks him. Just stabs him. Just stabs yeah. him. He falls over. There's bleeding. Gothel is trying to drag Rapunzel out. Yeah. And I love she that she's fighting. like, I will never stop fighting. I will never stop fighting against yeah. you for the rest of my life mm-hmm. unless you let me heal him. Yeah. Let me save him, and it'll be just like you wanted. Mm-hmm. It'll be just like the way it was. And, yeah. of course, Gothel is so narcissistic that she yeah. buys it. Like, mm-hmm. if you're a real villain, you say no, and you just keep on dragging your poor adopted kidnapped daughter down mm-hmm. the tower, and you let the man die. But for Gothel to know that Rapunzel – and Rapunzel never breaks a promise. Yeah. And, and promises and she, it will again, be just she like it does, was. For whatever reason, value this mm-hmm. messed up relationship yeah. that they have. Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. And so Rapunzel goes over there, tries to heal him. Flynn cuts off all of her hair Mm -hmm. and says, you were my new dream. Yeah. And then Gothel turns into Ash and trips. Really awesome sequence. Another one of my favorite Disney sequences now. Another great sequence. uh, Yanking the hood down over her face and all this. uh, Goes out the window. Pascal straight up trips her. Pascal straight up trips her. Uh, Nathan was like, he just killed her. We're like, no, she was already dying. She was dying. Like 400 years. probably would have been more traumatic for Rapunzel to, to actually see. see her wither into ash. Yes. Yeah. I completely agree. Yep. Yeah. We, Pascal did the right thing. Yes. Pascal did nothing wrong. <laughs> um, and again, we get that moment where whenever Gothel trips, Rapunzel reaches for her. Yeah. Like, because even even after watching Gothel stab Eugene, even after being chained up by her own mom, yeah. she still loves her. Yep. Rapunzel is amazing. There is a moment. This is... This is off to the side, so we might end up cutting this, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. So there's a moment in the end of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein mm-hmm. when uh, Frankenstein's monster, mm-hmm. it's at the very end, and uh, Victor Frankenstein has died out there on the ice, and his, the monster starts to weep and is building him this funeral pyre mm-hmm. to give him this respectful and honorable burial mm-hmm. or, or death, I suppose. And uh, the captain of the ship that was out there, that shipwrecked crew, says, you know, you just got finished telling, or I just heard this whole story about, you know, his creating you was the worst thing that he could have done. Mm-hmm. And you, I don't understand how you can have any love for him. Mm-hmm. And the monster says, he was my father. Yeah. It's like, it, like, it doesn't matter how much you've messed up your kid. Yeah. Your kid, there, it's always going to be complicated and they're always going to love you. It's always going to be, yeah, it's hard. And yeah. even, it, you know, because it's, uh, w- kids are special. The relationship yeah. between a parent and a kid is special. And and that's why, like, for me in narrative, the thing that will always get me, like, riled up faster than anything is seeing, like, bad parents. Yeah. Like, it just, it kills me. It's hard. Um, and, and, and yeah, I mean, even, even after all that, even after everything, there's still a part of you that does, I mean, that's your mom, man. Yeah. You know, that's your dad. Like. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's it's so heartbreaking and beautiful to watch um, and and to see and to see represented so beautifully, yeah. like because it could yes. have, it would have been really easy to like over dramatize that and make it you know a big, but it's just those those little subtle things yeah. just planted throughout. Like it's mm-hmm. just really lovely uh, being able to see like Rapunzel's real character. Yeah. So uh, with her cut brown hair now, she runs back over to Eugene. 
And like, I love, oh man, this happens right before, but she grabs his hand and like puts his hand on her hair yeah. and is trying to sing this it. This is this moment. And, yeah, yeah. Trying to do everything and it's not working and he dies in her arms. Yeah. Which and Flynn told us at the beginning of the film. He, yeah. This is the story right. of how this I died. This is the story of how I died. It's true. And we've lost um, all of the color in the scene has been drained yes. out. And mm-hmm. yes, it's gray outside, but of course that's, that's very much a narrative choice. Right. Yeah, Absolutely. There's no, almost no color in this scene mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll, I love this scene so much because even even as he is dead like he has yeah. died in her arms mm-hmm. she continues to sing over him mm-hmm. because she is the believer she yeah. is full of hope and her it is her eternal hope and faith mm-hmm. that ends up saving him yep and so her tear falls onto his face and much like in the original fairy tale yes the tear has magic uh-huh and it cures him and it heals him this yeah. is the first time that it's literally been the magic was inside you all along, <laughs> which I'm into. Yeah, so we get to and bring him. A beautiful, it's a beautiful sequence. Beautiful it's sequence. great. It's the everything music swelling, I wanted the, the light beast changing to be, yeah. but wasn't quite. We'll see how they do with the live action yeah. one. I guess we'll see how that goes. Oh, yeah, with Beauty and the Beast. Oh, I bet it's gorgeous. I, I bet it'll be beautiful. Yeah, yeah. But this was a gorgeous. Scene. It was absolutely wonderful. Mm-hmm. Totally lovely. Yes. So he's okay. He sits up. Uh, he really hugs her, embrace. like just pulls her to Beautiful him. Embrace. She kisses him. Yeah, um, go girl, you go girl. Yeah, and so then uh, we get Flynn doing some narration for us again. Well, not quite. We get back to the palace, and we yeah. get. Oh my gosh, there's so many scenes in this movie that it's I love so, so much, good. but we just get the the guard jumping into the room yep. and no, just looking no at the lines. king and queen, and they just look up and they're like, what? And he just nods. Yeah. And, and so then know. we see them running through the hall, yeah. they get out on the balcony, and, and there's I love their the expressions girl. again because they're not happy. No. They're anxious. They're Could this scared, be? They're so afraid scared that yes. they're about to be let down because this mm-hmm. is the moment they've been waiting for for so long. And again, this is what I've been waiting for for 18 years. Yeah. What if it's not everything that I dreamed it would be? What, what if, if it, it is? is? Either way, my entire life is going to change yes. in the next 30 seconds. Yes. Yeah. And so they get out there and I love that Rapunzel and her mother look so similar. Yes. I love it so much. I love the stopped. only sound you get from either of these characters is when the queen touches Rapunzel's face and does that like choke, yeah. sob, smile uh, sound. So beautiful. Um, we're both misty eyed right now. We I cannot know. handle uh, this. Can't it's handle. so good. Um, and then they just collapse they into embrace, hugs. Yeah, yeah, with the king. And then they pull Flynn in there too. Yes, who now has found who his now has family. found his family. He yes. was an orphan. He yes. was our orphan in this movie. He yeah, was the one without parents. Yeah. Um, and so then we get into the epilogue and we see that we learn that Rapunzel was a great ruler. Of Everyone course. loved her. Naturally. Ev- yeah, naturally. Because who even are you if you don't love Rapunzel? Seriously. You can just stop listening now. Seriously. Yeah, just this get out of our show. not your show. Yep. I mean, like, we only got two more. I don't know how you made it this far. Like, I mean, I, well, I guess you made it this far because we hadn't talked about Rapunzel yet, maybe. It's confusing. And so then we get to our happily ever after and they got married and there is the short called Tangled Ever After, which got shown in front of whenever they re-release Beauty and the Beast in theaters and they did it in 3D. There's like a little seven minute short. It's mostly about Pascal and Maximus, but it's about uh, Rapunzel and Eugene's wedding and all of this. It's really cute, really darling. We are not counting that in our grading system. Okay. We only count the movie. Yeah. The original movie, and we are grading the princess by however she is at the end of the film. Yes. Which means that we will not be able to count Rapunzel's magic hair for any no, of her grading No, the magic systems. is in her. Well, I mean, I think that... But she can't actually use the hair part. Right, but I think that the tear was representative of, like, she doesn't have... Wait, do you think that she still has the magic? Uh, yeah. Well, no, she doesn't because her hair's all brunette now. That was just, like, the no, last remaining bit. No, her hair bit. isn't magical. No, but, okay, stick with me now. Okay. All right. I was waiting. I was going to wait until Frozen to do this, but here we are. Okay. So, okay. So, whenever Frozen was first coming out, we saw the character designs of Anna and Elsa. Everybody was like, she looks exactly like Rapunzel. Come on, yeah. Disney. Why are you even trying? The reason why they look so similar, and this is technically a fan theory, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. They're cousins. All right. Rapunzel is if the it's cousin. A fan theory, we cannot use it as no, canon. no, no. Just stick with me. About? No. Okay. okay. Have right. you seen pictures of Rapunzel's no, mom no, next to know, Anna and Elsa's I know, mom? I know. Okay. All right. Just stay with me here. Anyway, okay. so Elsa. Okay. Elsa and Anna's parents, mm-hmm. mom has brown hair, and dad has, like, reddish blonde hair, okay? Uh-huh. Anna has red hair. Elsa has platinum hair, but she's got brunette eyebrows because in the universe in which Tangled and Frozen exist, when you have magical powers, your hair changes color, okay? 
Rapunzel also had magical powers. She's naturally brunette, but the magic flower gave her blonde hair until okay. you took that away, and then she was brunette. She doesn't have the magic power anymore. It was just in that remaining tier. I don't think that she still has the magic power, or else her hair would still be blonde. I think her hair is no longer magical. Mm-hmm. It's, she's certainly never going to have the hair glowing thing again. Okay. But this idea that that when she is deeply moved, that she has this healing property within her, mm-hmm. I am totally okay with. It seems also very odd to me that what what's the queen drank the magic potion, right? Uh huh. So then you think that the baby only got the magic in her hair follicles, but that's all. Well, I'm not saying that it makes a lot of sense. I'm okay. Well, I'm saying that my way is just as, as yeah. No, it's as really interesting. This is way. going to be problematic when we get to the grading system. Well, I mean, not really because we we're grading there. her really yeah. high. Like, so okay, so let's do this. All right, let's get there. Let's grade her. We'll find out about the magic as we go along. Sure. Yes, we will. Okay, so once again, we will be grading Rapunzel in six different categories. Autonomy, attitude, animal companion, attire, aria, and zombie apocalypse. So let's get started. Let's go. Uh, She can get a one to five in each of these categories. And (laughs) I mean, spoiler alert, I think there's going to be a lot of fives. I think this is going to go really well for her. I think so. All right. Autonomy. Does Rapunzel have autonomy and make her own choices and push the plot forward with the choices that she makes? Five. Five. Yep, she sure does. Attitude. Is Rapunzel the greatest princess in the history of ever? <laughs> she has but a legitimately, yeah. great attitude. She, and I do like that she gets down sometimes. Yes. I like that. We are allowed to see that she isn't happy all of the time, Yep, which is great. We are allowed to see that she even gets frustrated and angry. Yeah, um, I also think that it's so important that we see that, you know, mm-hmm. that she does love Gothel. Like, that's such a big deal, yeah. even with, like, the obvious hardship that, that relationship must be. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. Um, yeah, she'd be the best road trip buddy ever, I'm pretty seriously. sure. Seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd go anywhere with Rapunzel. I would, Rap- I would, I would follow Rapunzel to hell and back. I mean, just, okay. that's just how it is. Yeah, five. Five. Animal Companion. Now, we talked about this earlier. We didn't know if we wanted to include Pascal and Maximus, but then we kind of decided that Maximus is more of, like, Eugene's Animal Companion. Really true. Even yeah. though, like, he and, and Rapunzel and interact. only have that one little interaction where right. she's like, who's a good horse? Yeah, who's yeah. a good boy? Who's a good boy? Now, drop yeah. it. Drop the boot. Oh, you must be kidding. Yeah, just Which that entire thing. Yes. Yeah. But so, Pascal. But Pascal. Pascal. Five. Uh, five. Pascal is the best Animal Companion. That we have seen so far. That we have seen. Um, I also, again, am partial to the mice in Cinderella, mm-hmm. but... I would rather have Pascal if I just got one. Also, did you know that I always wanted a chameleon? When I, I did was a not girl? know that. I always wanted That's one. That's fantastic. Yeah. No, I love that uh, Pascal plays with Rapunzel. He's been her buddy for quite some oh, time. Yeah. Um, I love that he helps to vanquish uh, our yes. villain. Um, uh-huh. He keeps Eugene and Maximus in line. Yes, he like sure does. This. He's uh-huh. the best. He's, He's the, the best. best. So He's five. adorable. And every time there is a little Pascal bit, I mm-hmm. love it. It makes love me it. so happy. Mm-hmm. Attire. So Rapunzel only has the two dresses in this entire film. She's got her purple dress, and then at the very, very end during the epilogue, her dress is a little different. It's more of a pale pink, whitish. Okay. um, But you don't see it for very long, so it's mostly just that purple princess dress. Okay. How do you feel about it? You know, that one is really not one of my favorites. I'm going to grade it a little bit lower. Maybe like a 3.5. I'm okay with... uh, Oh, man. A 3.5. Yeah. Mmm... Yeah, I, I would yeah, not. she's it's only got no. You're absolutely right. To me, it's just not for me. She, yeah, she's. It reminds just, it's me just of the kind one. of a cheap uh, Barbie princess dress when you were a kid. You that know makes I mean? sense. Like, okay, it's just yeah. Not, All right, it's three point five. That's fine. okay. All right. Her songs. Rapunzel five. has. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you wasting my time? <laughs> got stuff to do. <laughs> Do we want to talk about him at all? I mean, we did. We did. I mean, I'm literally dancing with my husband for the first time ever to one of her songs. Right. Which still gives me goosebumps every time I hear it. I don't have to be in the room where the song is being played. Yeah. I can be in the kitchen doing it's dishes great. and overhear it and, and you'll still get, get the chill bumps. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then again, the uh, when will my life begin? the usual yeah. morning lineup. It's so great. It's excellent. So I like good. all of it. Excellent. Yep. All right. We did it. Okay. Yeah. Done. Zombie apocalypse. So... The girl is definitely going to be like your man. attack, yeah. like your oh, yeah. front man in any kind of, I mean, like whenever you are going out and foraging for supplies or food or whatever, you just need to have Rapunzel there right. with the frying pan she's got the frying and pan, like knocking out zombies yeah. left and right. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's fearless. So brave. Yeah. So, so brave. She's very smart. Very, clearly very smart. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And she's a woman of many talents. Very talented. That's yes. true. She can also cook. 
and and crochet I mean, and make yeah. candles. Yeah. I mean, like Making she can new clothes. Yeah. yeah. She's pottery. Really the person I mean, that you want if there's some sort of apocalyptic event. Yeah. Five. Five. All right, girl. Dang. That was Dang. so close to a perfect score. Dang. I'm impressed. So Rapunzel's final score. Yes. Is a 28.5. Dang. Which means that after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven weeks at number one, your girl Cinderella is finally toppled. And you know, I accept that. I really... Not I mean, even mad? I'm not even mad. Yeah. I love Rapunzel. And I mean, this is what being a more modern progressive movie will get you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Because we didn't, at, we, at no point did we have to go, ooh, Flynn, ooh, Flynn. Yeah, ooh. no. No, we really did not. And we were, uh-huh. I think that we were looking for that because we were like, we okay, were. is he being, I mean, like, he's a and little. And he was smarmy at first, snark- but he's supposed yeah. to be smarmy. Right. And, he, and, and then she is not buying it. Yeah. And he's all talking about how, like, he was born with these excellent good looks or whatever. But right. you know what he's not doing? Grabbing her by the arm and refusing to let her run away. Yes. Yep. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 28.5, which means Rapunzel is currently our best ever princess. Five. By I, a lot. Where was Cinderella? Cinderella is at a 26. So two and a half points higher. How did she get so high? I'm so interested to listen to that episode again. I know. It'll be I know really I good. fought really hard for her and you just let me have everything. So thanks for I that. I really did yeah, because, because I you knew, knew that this moment would I happen. knew that this was happening. <laughs> and also we, I knew that Ariel was happening, but I was, still, I mean, Ariel, Ariel is only lower, one. Though. She's only one point lower than Cinderella. Oh, Ariel has okay. a 25. Mm, that's pretty good. Um, it's, yeah, it's not bad. No. Um, but we do still have Anna and Elsa coming up. Yes, we do. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and make. And we're just keep. We haven't even talked about Merida because no, the movie is not good. I'm sorry, Merida. We're not. Your into hair brave. is the best part of that whole movie. Yeah, so we'll get there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll see because I legitimately thought that Rapunzel was going to get a 30, and now oh. I think that there's no way that anyone will get a 30. No, I don't think so. there's think no so. way. Yeah. And that's, that's okay. Yeah, and that's perfection fine. is is a that, that's impossible. A high bar. Yeah, literally. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, I, I love mean, that the one thing she gets a low score on is her dress. Which I know, cares? right? Yeah, right? who yeah, cares? Exactly. <laughs> I had a friend of mine asking me, "What do you mean you're grading them on their dresses?" And I was like, "They're Disney princesses. That's like the, the whole thing. thing. Yeah. yeah, we're not yeah. trying to be sexist. We're not no. trying to be. Yeah, that's just that's just part of it. Yeah. When I was a little girl, I wore a princess dress for Halloween for like eight years of my life. It's I was just- a witch every year. You know, and so, that's cool too. Yeah. <laughs> but I just mean, it's like, it's just part of the package. It's just part when of the package. Princess, exactly. Where's your princess dress? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's just part of it. Awesome. Well, okay. So next week we'll be doing a uh, brave. That's right. And grading Merida. Uh-huh. And it'll be interesting watching that movie again because I haven't since it was in theaters. I haven't seen it since it was in theaters either. And we have it. And so the kids watch it on occasion, but again, mm-hmm. it doesn't hold their interest either. Yeah. So, and I, I mean, remember, beautiful, beautiful Scotland. It's yeah. Got that going for it. Well, and, and here's the thing is I had my hopes up really high for Brave. I did too. I was ready for it to be my new absolute favorite. Mm-hmm. And it really let me down. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see it again going into it. Oh, just like snap. Like you know what I just remembered? Uh-huh. Merida doesn't have a song. It's not a I musical. Know. I know. There's a song that plays. But it's not. She's not singing she's it. she's not singing it. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be even worse than yeah. Jasmine. <laughs> no, it's not good. Plus, we have to watch the movie. Plus, we have to watch the movie. <laughs> womp, womp. Womp, womp. <laughs> and on that mega depressing note, <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode of Disney Princess Deathmatch, be sure to get in touch with us on Twitter using the hashtag DPDM. Um, Also, I know that you guys have now been doing this for several weeks, but because of the way time works, we're just now like aware of it. Some of you are doing like your own scoring systems, and I love that. Like it makes me so happy. In Um, our time, we've only just released Snow White. Yes. Yeah. yeah. For us, Snow White just came out like four days ago. And you guys have been wonderful and so excited, and it's been the best thing. Yeah, uh, we already have, uh, I mean, you guys have been so kind to us over on iTunes, leaving ratings and reviews, so uh-huh. please uh, head on over there if you haven't done that yet. Leave us a rating or a review. Um, if you want to support the show, if you want us yes. to do if you want us to do all the Disney Princesses official lists be darned, <laughs> then uh, head on over to patreon.com slash common room radio, mm-hmm. and you can kick us a dollar a month or whatever you can afford, and then we'll see about, you know, doing a second season yeah. of this show and bringing in some of those other princesses. Absolutely. We'll see about doing a Disney villain death match and, like, finally figuring out who this is the best villain ever. <laughs> Although I think it might be Gothel because she's like literally the worst yeah. in like a very personal level. It's like Umbridge versus Voldemort, right? Ooh, yeah. It is. It is. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Nailed, Nailed it. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can get in touch with me on Twitter. I'm at Elsa Grab the Salt. Although after this, I might change it to something with Rapunzel because Rapunzel she's grabs the, the salt. Rapunzel grabs the salt. <laughs> I don't think you get enough characters. Um, no, I'll keep it at Elsa Grab the Salt because it's just so unique and oh, weird. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I'll tell that story when we get to Frozen, I guess, in case you guys just haven't heard it yet. 
<laughs> I'm at Lizbeth Ray 555. You can also reach uh, both of us at Common Room Cast. Uh, we're also over on Facebook. Just search for Common Room Radio. We'll pop up over there. Um, and just thank you guys so much for all of the yeah. support and the love that you've been showing for the show. We've Definitely. had a lot of fun doing it. It's been such a blast. Um, and uh, yeah, we are looking forward to seeing it. I mean, like Rapunzel's basically the winner. I don't know why we're even doing Brave <laughs> and Frozen. And I love Frozen you. more than yeah. most people do. Mm-hmm. More than everyone on the planet. That's really why. You've wanted to talk about Frozen since we started podcasting. It's true. Yeah. Yes. And I've held myself back because yep. I have a lot of things to say. You know? And I haven't watched that movie in a number of months. So it'll actually be really interesting going back to that yeah. and seeing uh, It's been seeing back on rotation around here. For mm-hmm. a while, it was Corbin's favorite when he was really little. The yeah. first song he ever sang was Love, and open, Love is an Open Door. Like, I heard that. Like, like, door, door, door. Yes, yes, yeah. Because I haven't it. even listened to the music in ages. I mean, yeah. like, it's probably been like a year, you guys, since I saw this wow. movie. Um, and for a while there, I was watching it like every day. Oh, yeah. For all the time. months. Yep. Like, anytime we had, anytime some, I mean, there was a TV, I was watching Frozen. Yeah. Um, so it will be really, really interesting to see how I feel going into that movie now with a lot of distance between me and and just all of it it'll be good <laughs> well thank you guys so much for listening to the show thank uh-huh. you for joining us uh, we'll see you guys next week I'm Sarah Cade and I'm Liz Stevens <laughs> record button looks like do you yes do you it even looks like a record see (laughs) (laughs) well i hope that's the blooper at the end of the thing